students, in this video we'll consider the hypergeometric equation. If we're given numbers, A, B, and C, real numbers, consider the differential equation x times 1 minus x, y double prime, then a plus c minus a plus b plus 1 x y prime minus a b y equals 0. This is referred to as the hypergeometric equation. This is the hypergeometric equation. And this equation arises in the study of second order differential equations that have exactly three regular singular points. It's clear from this equation we see that 0 and 1 are regular singular points instead of quadratic ex so that linear expressions over here in y and then linear expressions over here. So clearly 0 and 1 are sing regular singular points. And furthermore, I know that if I change the variables from x to 1 over zeta, then zeta equals 0 will be a single, zeta equals 0 will be a regular singular point of that equation. So infinity is the third regular singular point of this equation. So this is sometimes referred to as the 0, 1, infinity singular point collection function. Okay, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to write down the additional equation, right, using the method of Fabianus. I have a c in my problem, so I'm not going to use c for my initial variable. I'm going to use a lambda, so it's going to be a lambda minus 1. That's the term we typically see as a c, c minus 1. Then a p0, which is the coefficient of uh, 1 over x in the expansion of the p term. So that's going to be a c over x, and that looks like that's the term we have. So that's great. So that's going to be a plus c lambda is equal to 0 because there's no q term over here because there's no x squared term. So we can follow a lambda. That will have a lambda minus 1 plus c is equal to 0. So the roots of your initial equation are lambda equals 0 or lambda is equal to 1 minus c. So we're going to focus on the lambda equals 0 case because that says that there's a solution to the form y is equal to the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of, let's call these numbers en, x to the n plus 0, right? Well, that's great because now that's just a regular Maclaurin expansion. So my y prime is going to be the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of e n times n times x to the n minus 1. And following with our standard procedure, we're going to leave the series starting at 0 even though the first term vanishes. We're going to shift our indices later. And then y double prime is going to be the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of n times n minus 1 e n x to the n minus 2 like that. Okay. Now, of course, what's going to happen over here? So we're going to have terms that have, let's look at like the, uh, so the, we'll call these x to the n terms, we'll call these x to the n minus 1 terms and x to the n minus 2 terms. There are no x to the n minus 2 terms because everything over here is already past the n minus 2 in the expansions and multiplying by x's, right? So let's look at the n minus 1 terms. What are the n minus 1 terms? Well, what are they going to look like? So I'm, what terms have x to the n minus 1? Well, I have an x times y double prime. That's going to give me a what? That's going to give me an n, then an e n, n, n minus 1, e n, like that, right? And then those terms, those have x to the n minus 1 in them, right? And um, good. And then what other terms have x to the n minus 1 in them? Well, these x squared y double will not. This c times y prime will, I'll have plus c n e n, like that. And then there are no other terms. Every other term is an x to the n term. So if I, if I write this out, this is going to be an e n times, let's pull out an n. So every term has an n in it. And I have an n, n plus c. There's an n over here. There's an, uh, so there's an n over here. There's a negative one. There's a c over here, right? So I have n minus 1 plus c. So those are the terms of an n, x to the n minus 1. What are the x to the n terms? x to the n terms and this in our differential equation. Well, what terms will those arise from? Those are going to arise from this negative x squared y double prime. So that's going to be a negative what? That's going to be a negative n, n minus 1, e n. Okay, those are the y double prime terms. Then these terms over here, these negative a plus b plus 1 x, will occur as well. So I have a negative a plus b plus 1. Those are my e times e n's, right? And those are times y prime, so those will give me an n as well, e n. And then what? And then we're going to have uh, the final terms are just going to give me a negative a b. So negative a b e n. That gives me all of our terms that we have over there in our shifted expansion by n. So if we factor this out, what are we going to have? We're going to have an e n. 
and then a negative sign from every one, and then we'll have an n squared, and then I'm, I'm gonna factor the negative from every one, and then an n squared, a negative n, a plus, a plus b plus one n, and then a minus a b, that turns into a plus a b, plus a b, like that, okay, excellent. And now if we do a little bit of algebra over here, notice that I have a what? I have a negative n over here and a positive n over here. Those are going to cancel out. And I have an n squared plus a, b, n plus a, b. That's exactly equal to n plus a, n plus b, like that. Okay? Excellent. All right, so now we have a recursion relationship for our coefficients. So now I have to shift these terms. So these are the n minus 1 terms, right? So if we write down our expansion over here, what's our ODE turn into? Our ODE is now going to turn into what? Is now going to turn into the sum n goes from 0 to infinity of what? Of the n minus 1 term. So there's going to be an n, it's going to be an en times n times n minus 1 plus c, x to the n minus 1, those are my n minus 1 terms, and then plus the sum, n goes from 0 to infinity of my n terms, right? Which is going to be a negative en, so negative en, and then n plus a, n plus a, n plus b, and then x to the power of n equals zero. So we can turn that into a plus over there and turn this over here into a negative sign, just to put the negative in the right order. Doesn't matter, but there we go. And so now what do we have over here? And I'm gonna shift this index of summation. So we're gonna shift this index of summation, turn that into a what? Turn that into an n equals one. That's gonna be an e n minus one. That's gonna be an n minus one, n minus one, and n minus one. So now I have all the n minus ones lined up because now this, this series over here really starts where? That really starts also at n equals one. So now what's our recursion relationship? Our recursion relationship is going to be e, that's going to be n, times n plus c minus 1, e n, is equal to what? Is equal to, is equal to e n minus 1, n plus a minus 1, n plus b minus 1, and now I can write this, the ratio of e n and e n plus one, so what's the, therefore we get, this, we get this relationship over here. I can take this over here and then divide by both sides. I'm gonna divide both sides by this and get this over here, n times n plus c minus one, right? And so now what that tells me is that tells me if I multiply this inequality out over and over, if I write this out over and over and over again, our conclusion from this is that e n is equal to what? Is equal to a bracket n, b bracket n over n factorial c bracket n, where what's this bracket? Where the bracket of two things, we'll recall that a bracket n is really a times a plus one, all the way up to a plus n minus one. It's basically the ascending factorial, right? You start at a and then you multiply by the next, by you shift by one unit n times and multiply the result. So that's our a bracket n. And therefore we have our solution. So our solution therefore is gonna be y is equal to what? Y is equal to, I'm gonna set a zero to be equal to one just to sort of, e, or e zero to be equal to one just to normalize this. Then the sum n goes from one to infinity of a bracket n, b bracket n, over n factorial c bracket n x to the power n, and this is my hypergeometric equation. This is my hypergeometric function. So this function over here is written as f of a b c parentheses x. And that's my hypergeometric function. Hypergeometric function over here. Now you might say, what happens to this solution over here? I can draw the same exact scheme over here, right? So the other, so sometimes it's called like 1, 1, right? For example, it might be called 1, 1, the hypergeometric equation. And so now there's a second form of this. The second form of this is f, let's call it 2, of a, b, c, and then x is going to be x to the 1 minus c, the original f1, call f1 over here, f1, 1, and then 1, 2 of, um, it's gonna be what? It's gonna be a, minus, a plus one, then um, a plus one minus c, b plus one minus c, and then uh, two minus c, two minus c, like that. So the colon x, 
So there's different parameters that you can actually verify that solution over there, and just by plugging it into the, using the same scheme over here, so you can find the second hypergeometric function using the exact same method. So we're going to see in further videos how we can relate other special functions like Legendre polynomials, Legendre functions, Laguerre polynomials, Fermat polynomials to these hypergeometric functions in a very particularly nice way. Thank you very much.